And good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is going to be, of course, talking about loans, infrastructure, borrowing, and how far we've come. Uh, we've invited to join us this morning Mr. Fulusho Fasho Tor, uh, former president, Chartered Institute of uh, Taxation of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. All right. Good Thanks morning. for joining us. Um, the Minister of uh, Finance, Budget and National Planning made uh, statements uh, yesterday uh, saying that the federal government will continue to borrow to, of course, uh, meet up with the infrastructure deficit uh, that we're facing in the country today. So I, I would like us to, first of all, um, go back to, you know, our current debt profile. It's in trillions of Naira. It has increased um, on, you know, levels that we maybe didn't expect in the last, you know, four, five, six years. Um, I want your thoughts on how far we've come with regards borrowing and how far or how well we've done with the um, infrastructure that needed to be fixed uh, that these funds were borrowed for. Well, once again, good morning, viewers. Uh, the current uh, borrowing spree in which we find ourselves appear to be a child of necessity because where you are having a budget of 13 trillion and what can be generated is barely 8 trillion, then it means that we have no choice than to go a borrowing. That's the major problem that Nigeria has found itself. Now, you'll recall that in, 19, in 2006, we exited the Paris Club uh, uh, de uh, debt. And at that time, our debt provi uh, profile happened to be 17.34 billion. But today, we are talking of almost nine, uh, over 90 billion dollars as our debt prof uh, profile. You can see the gap. That's the major issue. Uh, we are being told that this borrowing is majorly on infrastructures. These infrastructures, if we are, we are utilizing the entire loan on the infrastructure, there wouldn't be problem. But the question remains the pricing of this infrastructure. Because where you have to borrow, say, 100 billion, and the actual cost of the infra infrastructure is about 30 billion, then where does the 70 billion difference go? All right, Mr. Fashota, um, let, me, let, me, let me take you up on what you, you just mentioned, really. Does it not then bring us back to the issue of corruption in Nigeria? Because when you borrow, you know, following your analogy, 100 billion naira to, you know, execute a project that should originally cost 30 billion naira, and that money is siphoned, or in cases where, you know, you borrow money for projects and the projects never see the light of day, what then is the essence of borrowing if these monies do not accomplish what they were borrowed for? Well, the answer, the answer is very obvious. But one thing we have to give credit, uh, credit to the current government for is the continuity in its implementation of the budget for infrastructure. You will realize that major capital projects being uh, executed by the current government happen to be the brought forward from the previous government. In Nigeria, we've had a situation where if new government should take over, then they abandon the former project and institute new project. And that has not occurred well for the, uh, for the country. Now, the pricing of our infrastructure has never been addressed up to now. Even though we have the Bureau for Public Enterprises, we have Fiscal Responsibility Act. We have so many laws that ought to have taken care of corruption. Yet, we appear to not have the uh, political will to be able to implement this. Because up till now, the cost of infrastructure 
in the public service is still atrociously high compared to what happens in other clients. Mm. So, so I, 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 I want to... Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I want us to... You know, yes, I understand the, you know, the, the factor where the corruption comes in, um, but there's other countries that have continued to borrow, and people would argue that there's absolutely nothing wrong with borrowing as long as you're using it well enough. Um, and, of course, uh, putting the infrastructure that is necessary um, in place. Um, there's um, the 2014 National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan, you know, that was uh, covering from 2014 to 2043, I believe, that stated that Nigeria needs hundreds of billions of dollars um, to fix yeah. our infrastructure deficit. Um, do you think that we are directing our loans and our borrowing, we are putting them in the right direction? Uh, there is, of course, the roads and infrastructure. There is also the um, energy and other fact, um, um, aspects that we should immediately borrow to fund. So do you think we're doing the right thing with the money that we've borrowed so far? Well, uh, from 2015 to date, we appear to be channeling our borrowings to the right direction. But as I said, the problem of pricing of the infrastructure is still not yet addressed, but we are still we are following the the the, 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 the master pro, uh, uh, plan concerning the infrastructure. We are having the uh, railway uh, our railway sector being modernized. We are having the airport being expanded, so especially the major airport. Then we are having the roads, you know, being uh, upgraded, but. Let's look at our revenue profile. Our debt servicing to revenue uh, uh, percentage is just too high for comfort. What I mean is that the revenue we are generating is just not enough to be able to cater for servicing the debt that we are having. Uh, going back to your question, whether uh, the, 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 the loan is is being channeled to the right project. Yes, as I've answered that. But we can still do more. Because if we continue borrowing and we don't have enough revenue to be able to service it, it's going to be a problem in the future because it means that we are going to default. There was a time that uh, uh, Nigerians were crying that uh, uh, some of these projects, we are taking loans from China to execute. One day, China may come to take those uh, projects. But the, the debt management office has addressed that, that since we continue to service our loans as at when due, there will not be such a thing. But if we want to continue to service this loan and we don't have enough revenue, what are we doing? So the question now comes to what is Nigeria doing about increasing its revenue prof uh, profile? You know, Nigeria has a lot of resources, but we, are, we appear to be contented with the oil alone the revenue from oil. We are contented with that. What are we doing for, uh, uh, with non-oil revenue? It appears we are doing very, very little. Our uh, revenue from mineral resources is still not there. Then the revenue from taxes. Yes, we, we know that we are the, the revenue profile from ta uh, uh, taxes appear to be increasing, but it's still not optimal. We need to look into this. When it comes to these taxes, we look at the enumeration of the taxpayers. If we don't have good database of people who are supposed to pay taxes, then there is no way we can be sure whether what we are collecting uh, 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 from the taxpayers the, uh, is adequate or not. So, so yes, you know, we and, and, and that is taxpayers enumeration. Yeah, and, and that is, of course, you know, the responsibility of government to increase the number of Nigerians in its tax bracket. Um, yeah. instead of, of increasing, increasing taxation. Base. you know, But there's also another aspect that I've repeatedly uh, mentioned, and that is blocking of leakages. Um, the government, of course, a couple of days ago on the show, we talked about a one trillion naira that was you know, unremitted to the Treasury sing single account. We've also continuously spoken about billions of naira that is you know, given away in bribes and you know, is unremitted, doesn't get to government coffers. Um, do, do you think that we can increase revenue and block leakages of government funds 
that and that way we would increase the amount of money that is available to Nigeria to fund its infrastructure instead of borrowing. Those two measures you have just mentioned, that is blocking the leakages, increasing the revenue profile, will surely take Nigeria to the promised land when it comes to the issue of infrastructure. Because those two, uh, those two attempts will guarantee our ability to repay whatever loan that we have taken. Then it will guarantee the implementation of the infrastructural programs that the government must have set for itself. Then it will guarantee surpluses in our revenue by the time we, uh, we service our debt. But if we don't have the political way to block the uh, leakages, then we are still deceiving ourselves. Even if we are, we are generating more than enough revenue, it's, it will be like uh, pouring water into the basket. And if, even if we block the leakages and the revenue profile is still low, then we will still not have enough money to service the debt. So we should, Nigeria government should focus on those two areas, block the leakages, and there must be political way to do that then we should increase our revenue profile. Okay, so we know the solutions now, but how about the consequences, you know, that could occur when these things are not implemented? Can you enlighten us on some of the implications of, you know, this continuous borrowing and the leakages that we'll continue to see in the country? Well, it's like mortgaging our future in the country. Because if we start certain projects and we are not able to carry such projects through, maybe due to lack of funds, due to our inability to service the debt at any particular point in time, then we are going to have this project stalled. Then we will have uh, the, our creditors dictating to us. For example, IMS and, IMF and World Bank, they are recommending uh, the, the debt servicing. Uh, the, uh, the debt servicing to be 56%, meaning that what you are using your revenue to do every year will be more than half uh, uh, to service your loan will be more than half of what you will use for your uh, for your benefits. If you should follow World Bank and IMF uh, 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 recommendation, there will be a problem. So what we are doing now, we must immediately take action for a media, uh, 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 for a media purpose. Otherwise, we will mortgage our future, and the generations yet unborn will not forgive the current generation. Is, so Nigeria should block the leakages. We um, should increase our revenue profile. All right, Mr. Fasho Uto, is, is there space uh, to bring in a conversation on public-private partnerships to fix this infrastructure um, deficit? Uh, the president made a statement a few days ago, you know, that, you know, at some point Nigerians will be allowed to get into PPP agreements uh, to, of course, uh, tackle this infrastructure deficit. Um, because the fear really is, like you said, continuous borrowing, um, stagnant, stagnant revenue figures, and, you know, we continue to you know, put ourselves in a, in a fix. We may not get the tax break uh, the, um, um, that we got in 2006, not the tax break now, the debt cancellation that we got during our passengers' tenure. Yeah. We may not get that again. Yeah. So public-private partnerships and other ideas like that, how can we get into that? Yeah, there must first of all be a lack of trust deficit. The private sector must have faith, they must have belief that government will be serious with them whenever they go into partnership with government. If there is no trust, private sectors will just be apprehensive to go into partnership with the government. And you have just mentioned about uh, debt cancellation. Before people can cancel our debt, they, be, they have to be sure that, yes, we will be using our revenue appropriately. There will not be revenue leakages. So if we have public-private uh, partnership, it means that government is really ready to block the leakages. They will be able to make, uh, they, they will be able to provide enabling environments that will guarantee confidence for this private sector to go into partnership with them. And that is the way to go. All right. There um, must be that trust to be created by government. Mm.
lots of solutions here. And once, 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 once there is a private public uh, partnership, I can assure you our, rev our revenue profile will skyrocket and we'll be able to overcome the current budget deficit syndrome that we find ourselves in. Mm. Mr. Right. Fulusho Fashoto, former president's Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. <clears throat> Thank you very much for coming on the breakfast. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Um, the conversation continues. Um, obviously, we, we have uh, a lot of these angles that we hope that we would always be able to open up um, and expand uh, with regards to loans, infrastructure, borrowing, um, and of course, uh, like we just mentioned, public-private partnerships as an idea in order to fix the infrastructure deficit that we um, see here in our country. Yes. Coming up next. Security. Let's talk about that security meeting that uh, the governors had with, uh, uh, of course, we talked about northern leaders as well, um, Senate President uh, Buhari's reps as well. Let's talk about that and see how we can go forward, you know, in tackling banditry and if negotiations or amnesty are any way to go.